Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I'm going to try to make some pirate peg dolls using some oil paints and some acrylic paints. And my son just made this pirate ship today as kind of part of a pirate unit a pirate unit study and an explorer's unit study. So the smallest peg dolls work pretty well on the pirate ship and so he asked me if I could make him some pirates and that's what we're gonna try to do now. And then in addition to that, we went ahead and tried to make a little crow's nest right up there because it did not come with one. All right, so let's see. <laughs> let's see how well we do. Okay, so I'm gonna use the book by Margaret Bloom called Making Peg Dolls and More. The only thing is that these peg dolls are larger than the ones that we wanted to use so that the scale is a little bit better with the pirate ship. So I'm not quite sure how well that's gonna work out because these heads are really small and I'm thinking that he might need a little felt cap or something. Although my son did ask me just to use paint and not any felt on it. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to begin by covering my workspace with this piece of cardboard. I'm also going to use it as a paint palette because I did not pull out my other paint palette and this works fine. It's not the best, but it worked okay. And I start out with a little bit of oil paint, which is in red, and a little bit of soy paint in black. And then this, I think it's also soy paint, paint in the cream, but it was a little bit dry, so I ended up changing it out for some acrylic paint. I think that one just got a little bit old. So I went ahead and did the whole thing in this kind of creamy color. It almost looks the same color that it started out as, but I was going to try to make stripes, and I really wanted white, but I didn't have white handy, or at least I didn't think to use the white that came in the Lyra paint kit, which I did not pull out. Now these stripes are super hard to make, and part of the reason why it was hard was because my paint was really thick, and I'm going to thin it out in a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and try to do at least one band in this red, which is the oil paint, over the soy paint, which I don't even think I let it dry all the way. I'm fairly impatient, so uh, I would say Take your time, let each layer dry, because in the end it gets all over my fingers and kind of all over the peg doll. Alright, so I'm going to try another way to get these stripes, and I use some post-it tape, and it's not super adhesive, so it's going to kind of come off. And there I'm finally thinning out my paint with a little bit of paint thinner. So the post-it strips... They're actually like for correcting mistakes like on essays and things like that. And it worked okay. The only thing is that these bands are quite large and I'm going to compare them in a second and show you. But it worked pretty good to get some stripes. So maybe on a larger peg doll, I think the stripes will look a little better. So there's the comparison between the two. It's okay. It's not great. This is my first attempt at doing something other than a solid color on the peg dolls, on, on any peg doll or finger puppet. And... The thing about it is, and I'm, I'm working on the hair right here, but I'll tell you something, that my my child, my 10-year-old, when I was done with this, I got the most loving hug from him. He was so pleased with the, with the peg dolls that I made for him. It really, it doesn't matter how well or how poorly you do on these. Your kids are just going to be so appreciative of the work that you did to make them. So put your best effort into it and go ahead and try it. And I have a peg doll tutorial. I'm going to link it below. It was my very first peg doll that I ever made. It turned out terrible. And I, you know, it's still going to be on my channel. You can take a look at it. And my daughter loved it at first. And then, of course, I got a little better at it. And then she's like, you know, I don't really care for that one. She's a little more sensitive to the way the peg dolls look but my son he just he was just so happy to have them he's 10 and he still likes these so I would say give it a go and, and try these out so I got the hair on a, with, with a little bit of difficulty and now I'm working on the face and I went ahead and drew in one eye and right now I'm working on the eye patch and I'm using a sharpie pen which works okay but it does bleed a little bit through the the wood grain and a, a viewer had suggested that I spray these with some sealant first which is a great idea, and I have not done that. <laughs> I'm a little bit lazy. And I went ahead and gave him a beard, and you'll be able to get a closer look at that beard at the end of the video. The last thing I decided to do was put a little kind of bandana kind of cap on him. He looks kind of like a jolly pirate, in my opinion, but I thought he needed a little bit more. I, I feel like the heads on these little peg dolls were a little bit too small, and so I thought bulking up the head might make it look a little bit more proportional. 
maybe they're supposed to be children or something, but these pirates are arg, you know? They gotta be big, older pirates, not children pirates. Anyway, the getting the cap down was a little bit difficult because it kept gluing onto the hair and the hair kept poofing up, but I got it to stick down eventually. And then I'm just adding some black detail to the peg doll and that's it. You can see, I actually had to touch it up a little bit. You can't really see too much here, but it did. The colors did bleed onto each other because you can still see them all over my fingers. Here's the other one that I made. I don't have a tutorial for, for this one, but it's similar to the uh, the one with the stripes, except I did give him a little coat, sort of. And the last one here was the one with the bands that I used the post-it tape with. And I went ahead and gave him a little bit of a cape as well. So he wants more, and I will be having a few more tutorials on these peg dolls. And here you can see them inside his pirate ship. He absolutely loves it. Now one more thing that I did for the pirate ship was give it a crow's nest. And I used some toothpicks and a little wooden plate from my daughter's wooden plate set. <laughs> and I drilled a hole in it, and then I was able to get it onto that mast. All right, so if you want to see some of our other peg doll tutorials, you can tap on the screen right now. And I also have a whole pirate unit study that this was inspired by. So you can see that playlist as well. All right, thanks for watching.